Woohoo! What is up? My dog's lost in here. Beautiful, cold day in South Florida. And today, we have one goal in mind. We are gonna be turning this block of wood into a hopefully highly effective fishing lure. I'm not an expert at this, but it's something I love doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I've done this once before and I actually made a swim bait and caught a slot snook on it. Done. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Look at that snook on the hand carved lure. That's probably a 28 inch snook, maybe 29 or right in the slot. And he freaking slammed the mullet. <laughs> I could not be more stoked right now. Which is really cool. So we're trying something today. If you want to actually watch people who know what they're doing, go check out Solar Baits, Marlin Baits. Those guys actually are like professional swim bait makers and stuff. But I thought it'd be fun to goof around. Also, the landscape crew shirts are still available i'll leave a link down below like i said in the previous videos i'm doing a hundred dollar tackle giveaway to three people once all the shirts sell out so you can support the channel and also have a very high chance at winning over 100 bucks worth of fishing gear so we're gonna go start working on our swim bait see what we can do so we started out with the drawing of version one of the bait here and unfortunately i don't have a bandsaw so we had to use a jigsaw and a vise to make our cuts to get the shape of the bait right which is definitely a lot rougher than using a bandsaw would be once we did that though took a sander out and started adding some shape after a ton of carving and sanding and carving again sanding again i had the general shape of the bait and then i sealed the whole entire thing and painted it but after it started to dry i was honestly just really unhappy with the way this bait turned out and looked so it was back to the drawing board for version 2.0 so we drew out a new mullet pattern and once we had that all drawn out we needed to sketch it onto our block of wood that we would be using. We then took it over to the jigsaw to cut the rough shape and once out of the jigsaw we took it to the belt sander to bring it to a more precise shape before we started carving with our razor blade. Once we finished carving we did some light sanding to kind of round out the edges to make it a little more lifelike. Then it was time to add in a hole where we were going to put in our weights. I just used some BBs I had laying around the shop. Then it was time to dry fit our eyes. Then we were going to epoxy those and fully screw them into the bait and have them set. Once that was set, it was time to cure the bait. All right. <laughs> While that one dries, full stop, I tried to make this video yesterday and I made a lure and I came in properly and prepared, didn't really like take the right steps, I cut corners, did a really bad painting and this is the little <laughs> mullet pattern that I came up with. But we're going to try to do a much better job painting today and see what we can do because that's, that's pretty piss poor. The action on this bait was actually incredible but um, I wanted to redo a paint job and do something justice here because it's uh, poor. Whatever, it's bad. <laughs> so, I, I want this colored pattern, this lure, to look like a black mullet or a striped mullet, their actual name, but everyone calls them black mullet. And I googled black mullet to get in reference, and this is what came up. So, I think we'll have to google striped mullet here to get the uh, right color pattern going. Hey guys, really quick, I want to hop away from the video and talk about today's sponsor, Keeps. Now, did you know that two out of three men will experience some type of male pattern baldness by the age of 35. And did you know that 95% of my audience is men, and out of that 95% of those men, over like 85% of them are over the age of 20, so you know this applies to you, so listen up. The best way to prevent hair loss is to be proactive about it while you still got some threads on top of your noggin. You can get doctor-approved treatment plans that will arrive right to your door, and all the instructions that you need. Keeps is also super affordable because they use generic versions of FDA approved treatments to help keep their prices down. Keeps will take some time for you to see the results so the best time to start is as soon as possible. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Lawson or click the link in the description to save 50% off on your first order. That is K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Lawson. So go down there, check out that link and get started saving the hair on your noggin.
Ooh. All right, we got a black back, gray sides coming in. We're getting some good color here. We're gonna let this dry out, maybe put a coat of uh, clear coat on it, and then try to get the scale pattern. So I've created a stencil. So I've created a stencil here that I'm using to paint my gill pattern and a little bit of fin action on. Because I don't trust my ability to actually carve that or paint that yet. And it's not great, but it's not horrible. I can live with it. The base layer of paint on this bait is actually looking kind of sick. I will say I kind of messed up the gill plate a little bit. This one and uh, this one, they're at different placements, but I'm not going to worry myself about it too much because I think that looks pretty awesome. Our next step here is we're actually going to use this little corrugated stretchy cloth that was just from a pack of garlic from the grocery store to make our scale pattern and we're going to be really kind of closing in on the design on this bait here onto the scale pattern in scales eyes and then add in some additional details like some little black dots to round out our mullet That's not too bad. I can live with that. All right, we're actually almost wrapping up here. We are going to throw on some eyeballs and then add a few more details along the body and I think we might be in business and then we gotta let it cure, obviously. But right now, let's do the eyes. Oh, daddy, that's slick. That is slick. That, I, I genuinely so, so ecstatic on how this lure is turning out right now. You know, the action wise, we're just going for a twitch bait, essentially because it doesn't really matter how it looks. If it will at least just twitch from side to side, I can use it to catch fish. It's kind of my cop out for uh, not knowing a ton on how to make good action. But the body shape of this and everything is uh, turning out really well and I'm really, really happy with the results so far. Um, gonna add a few more details, put some epoxy to kind of close the whole thing and seal the whole daddy up, and then we're gonna go try to fish with it. All right, I actually decided to skip over adding thing on the paintbrush because I went back and looked at some photos of some mullet and was just really honestly happy with where it's at now and didn't want to add anything else to it. So we're gonna start very gently epoxying our bait to give it that final seal and shine. Then we're gonna let it dry, throw some hooks on it, and go test it out in the water. I'm just, I, I am really happy I decided to redo the bait even though it was kind of a pain in the neck. The quality of this bait, the finish on it, is just so much better than the one I worked on yesterday that I don't think I'm even gonna put any of the footage in. You know, it's kind of a pain. Sometimes it'll feel like a waste of a day or waste of a video, but uh, I'm really, really happy with how this is turning out. I wish I had the old like rotisserie thing to help this dry faster, but we're not quite there yet in technology. As we make more of these videos and as my skill improves, I would love to buy some more tools to help me continue honing my craft here. But for now, we're gonna go hang this vertically in front of a fan on low speed and let that dry and start cleaning up the shop and hopefully by the time we clean everything up, the uh, epoxy will cure well enough. This is five minute epoxy. We're not trying to make anything world class, we're trying to make something fishable. All right, it is time to put the mullet twitch bait to the test. It is the next morning, ran out of time yesterday to try and go fish. So we're gonna be seeing the action for the first time and see if it has the potential to catch some fish. It looks awesome. I, I am so stoked with how it came out. It's obviously pretty basic, but a great starting point and I can't wait to get better at doing this. So let's start throwing and see if we can uh, get some fish on it. All right, let's see what's up here. I feel like it's gonna float.
in terms of walking the dog, it looks pretty damn good. It sits a little higher in the water than I'd like. Basically a top water that kind of shoots underneath every once in a while. Sort of like a, like a Rapala subwalk if you've ever seen those or like a Badonkadonk, uh, yeah, what they're called, Badonkadonk bomber or something where like kind of dips underneath the water. We'll see. I mean, the action on it itself as a top water looks really good. All right, we're just gonna walk the bank, throw our uh, new confounded lure, see if we can get a snook or a bass or maybe even a tarpon to smash the crap out of it. The action looks really great. I wish it would be like an inch beneath the surface than it is right now, but like, see if I can get this walk in short. Basically, it's a walk the dog style bait that happens to like ride really low. Like it's really not on top of the water. It's nose dips under while the tail stays up a bit. So we'll see. I mean, that's like a classic, like amazing type of action. I was hoping it would be a little beneath the surface. So now I know the next bait I make, add probably a little more weight to it. But uh, I still 100% believe this can get smashed open. Damn, dude. Oh, when this thing gets beneath the surface and you just retrieve it, it is literally a perfect glide bait. That was like kind of what my original intention was hoping that like if I reeled it, it would just glide really nicely. And that's exactly what it does. Okay, things might have just got a little more interesting here. All right, this bait is now dual function. If you're quick enough, and you start reeling as it hits the water and it's under, it literally just swims like a glide bait. Just perfectly side to side, <laughs> wags through the water. And if you let it float to the top and start working it, it literally has the perfect walk the dog action. If it was like maybe just slightly heavier, I think this bait would have been perfect, dude. Damn, spillway is pumping. All right, let's see if there's anything that wants to eat the, uh, glide bait. Someone else is fishing line. Are you kidding me right now? You gotta be freaking kidding me. I'm snagged on someone else's fishing line in the spillway. No! Oh! My freaking lure got caught on someone else's fishing line so I was snagged in the spillway. Son of a gun, dude! And I like was barely pulling on it, it broke. I must have nicked my line over top of the metal when I was trying to get it off. Oh, I am heartbroken. What to do, what to do. Damn, man. Well, uh, back in the shop and let's run it back, I suppose. The only thing we can do is put our head down, make another lure, and go try to catch fish on it. Let's go. All right, very windy this morning, but we got our swim bait that we remade and uh, we're on the landscape and we're on the hunt for tarpon, snook, and largemouth bass. The new bait doesn't look quite as good as the original, but it actually swims better, so we'll see what we can do. All right, just pulled up to a nice hole here with some culvert pipes. Got the twitch bait rigged up. Oh, this bait, that the, the first version two i should say the one that i broke off yesterday 
was more of a spook, a top water walking bait. And this one is actually like an awesome twitch bait and it's kind of perfectly hovering down there. Like just like a couple inches beneath the surface is what I was hoping it would do. This thing is actually gonna be pretty, pretty gnarly. I'm pretty, pretty freaking ecstatic about that. And that's bait right here. So I fished the entire day throwing the glide bait and only had a few small follows from largemouth. The following day I went out and fished in the pouring rain for eight hours. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like literally like <laughs> Let's hope we catch some fish. This is going extremely well. We caught a single bass today. We're moving to a new spot. <laughs> this is ridiculous. The following day, I went out again and attempted to catch a fish on the handmade bait. Ooh, I had a few bass giant. follows and a few peacocks, but nothing. Oh, come on. Please eat. Had a peacock bass come right up on it. Oh my god, I just got crushed. Come over top of that pad and I missed the fish. <laughs> Probably don't need to set the hook like I'm trying to hook a tarpon when it's a largemouth bass. Let's see if he'll come back and hit it again. Oh, there's a big fish. What the heck? That feels freaking huge. What did I just hook? What, so, what just bit me? Something like smashed this swim bait. What do I have on? Oh God. That basically sums up this whole entire experience with this lure. He ate it. He freaking ate it. Right then there. Like he full on chased down my swim bait and is hooked into his mouth. This is gonna be a pain. I am sorry, buddy. Jeez Louise. Oh my God, I got it. I am very sorry. I guess I'll take that as my sign. It's time to put down the homemade lure. That was brutally awful. I fished for three days trying to catch a singular fish on it and I did not. And what do I finally end up catching? But a soft shell turtle that legitimately ate the whole entire lure. Uh, slightly depressing. We will do better next time. I think the original one would have worked really well, but we unfortunately, you know, broke it off. But I guess that's the way it goes when you're trying to do a lot of bank fishing that sometimes things just get broken off and snagged and don't quite go the way you plan. I know this is a bit of a different style of video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I had a ton of fun making the lure and doing it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to get better at this. Like all of a sudden this overwhelming sense of like, I need to get better at making these lures because it would be so much fun. And I have so many different ideas for lures that we can make. And we'll do a much better job than uh, this time, but I've now spent four days in this video and I have to just put it to bed. And somehow uh, catching a social turtle on it has sucked the wind out of my sails quite, quite well. So we'll end it there. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like. If you have any suggestions for lures that you'd like to see me try to make eventually as I get better at it, let me know. <laughs> but I appreciate you regardless, peace.